Zaragon here. I have assimilated more than 17,000 albums from around the world in my 35 years as a music connoisseur. To explore this journey in depth, see the Trimax Music Database on RYM and the Directory of English Bands on Jazz Rock Soul, both linked below. While you're at it, hit the like and subscribe buttons and share the video. Today, we're going to examine the track Jack the Stripper, Fairies Wear Boots by Black Sabbath from their 1970 album, Paranoid. <laughs>
Black Sabbath with Fairy Wears Boots from their 1972nd album, Paranoid, um, listed on original copies as Jack the Stripper slash Fairies Wear Boots. Uh, Jack the Stripper is actually just the intro instrumental. Anyway, see the directory of, for more rubies and sapphires from the catalog of Black Sabbath, see the directory of albums by English B artists linked in the description below for, um, for album by album red hot tracks from the catalog of Black Sabbath, um, as well as by all other UK B bands that you could possibly think of, like Bebop Deluxe, The Beat, Backdoor, Bad Company, The Beatles, The Buzzcocks, Byzantium, Babe Ruth, the Bee Gees, The Babies, Baker Gerwitz Army, Bauhaus, Bow Wow Wow, and on and on and on. Also see the playlist for all my um, hard rock analysis videos, yes, in the card. Anyway, Jack the Stripper, Fairies Wear Boots, it begins with this matted octave guitar figure in G over a rudimental tribal beat, and then the band commences at 13 seconds in, Shifting the key center to A for eight bars or so, and some more sliding notes Iomi's playing there, and then um, up to B for another eight bars or so, and then uh, close cadence power chords come in and disrupt that, that, no, 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 that, and um, disrupt the intro at 40 seconds in, and it goes like back and forth between those two sections. Um, with some open cadence licks, this time uh, traveling up to D minor. And then the structure finally resolves at around 1, 15, 1 minute 15 seconds in with this flow in G minor. And that heralds the song proper. And Ozzy enters at 1 minute 29 seconds in with his voice rendered sl with a slight distant distorted tone. Yeah, and then a vocal flare-up on the line, um, saw you with my own two eyes. And these lyrics are, are real hoot. And um, saw it with my own two eyes, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Going home late last night, suddenly I got a fright. Yeah, I looked through the window and surprised what I saw. Fairy boots are dancing with a dwarf all right now. So, so far, my, my impression is that it's about a bad trip or something. He's hallucinating. Although, um, this actually had kind of like a darker origin from some accounts. Yeah, fairies wear boots, and you've got to believe me. Yeah, I saw it. I saw it. I tell you no lies. Yeah, fairies wear boots, and you've got to believe me. I saw it. I saw it with my own two eyes. And then it repeats that. Um... Seemingly silly lyrics. Later on, he says, so I went to the doctor, see what he could give me. He said, son, son, you've gone too far because smoking and tripping is all that you can do. Yeah. Um, and according to um, Geezer Butler, this song was uh, inspired by a violent encounter that he had with skinheads in London. And so skinheads are the fairies referred to in the song. Although... Ozzy, um, let's, oh no, Tony Iommi states that the lyrics were inspired by an incident in which Butler and vocal and, and Osborne were um, cannabis smoking and had a hallucinous and hallucinated seeing fairies in the park. Yeah. So anyway, um, that the the vocal section, uh, the first verse and chorus note cuts to a solo or the verse structure at one minute forty seconds in. And here we have some wailing Iomi leads and some really pronounced Butler bass lines. Yeah, props to uh, Butler. I, his, his bass work was quite uh, present throughout the track. You could, it, it was interesting hearing the counterpoint between Iomi and, and, and Butler throughout this. Yeah, and that counterpoint. Um, not, not, not something that they do too many times on record, but um, tensing, tightening at three minutes, 30 seconds in, switching to a flowing cadence with precise leads in A, then B, and the power chord sustains and runaway drum rolls reassert at three minutes, 49, 59 seconds in, yeah, basically four minutes, um, ushering a return to the song proper. And it takes on more kind of a strutting groove with um, during this final repetition of the verses, with kind of a syncopated drum pattern emphasizing the th three and six of eight. 
Um, and then the outro commences at, um, during the last 40 seconds, at, at 529 to be exact, with some bendy leads, which give way to this th this um, kind of double triad in 3-4 that carries to the fade out. Like like threes over the over the bars of four, yeah. Um, Iomi playing it, -na 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 -na, like that, like that. Um, anyway, yeah, uh, quite an epic uh, closing track to an epic packed album, Paranoid, the second album released by Black Sabbath in 1970, um, a year that they really just came on strong with a double whammy, their their first album, and then Paranoid, all all in the span of a year. Um, you know, shooting right to the forefront of the first wave of English heavy metal, and the band that would ultimately have the most, that would exert the most long-term influence over the development of the genre, um, making it almost kind of like a, and putting, and putting metal kind of into a very distinct class kind of under the, the rock idiom. And, um, and it's just amazing. It was one. It, it 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 instantly alienated a lot of people, including a lot of young people, including a lot of young men, and then it instantly drew a lot of others in. And it was the only thing they wanted to hear. It was um, Ed, Ed McCann in his book uh, Rocking the Classics um, theorized that metal and symphonic rock uh, were respectively the Dionysian and Apollonian outgrowths of the late '60s hippie counterculture. Um, you know, one metal representing more um, like a, a drift into the occult, into darkness, and the um, the seeking of, of like carnal, fleshy pleasures, um, craven, pursuing craven impulses and such, and and symphonic rock represented more the the spiritual quest, the the intellectual pursuit. Um, and um, the way I um, have viewed it, according to the, the um, metal, the, the um, dichotomy of, of metal and symphonic rock at the turn of the 1970s, is that uh, both were, well, both were basically part of the maximalist outgrowth of um, Sgt. Pepper and Psychedelia and Cream Hendrix, basically the whole creative explosion of 1967. This embodying more the, out, more the uh, line that extended from Hendrix through blues rock, like the, the male school, and the harder, more rupturous end of, of psychedelic garage rock. And, um, <clears throat> and, and um, the... Um, Embodying more the working class outgrowth, whereas, um, as Ed McCann has pointed out, um, the two styles came from different geographical areas, and that's that's an interesting thing to study. It's like metal, proto metal, largely developed in the in the industrial midlands, like Birmingham, um, and heavy metal tended to come from Southeast England and from institutes of higher learning, whereas, um, yeah, yeah, like upper class kids of um, that went to universities as opposed to art school. And um, metal tended to originate from working class kids. And, and that, 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 that factory type city setting and the, the machine type sounds, yeah. Anyway, yeah, Black Sabbath, um, one of just a handful, uh, in, in a select club of rock bands that spawned a whole new genre, a whole new movement. And, um, and for many people are still the best in their field, yeah. For more rubies and sapphires from the catalog of Black Sabbath, see the directory of albums by English B artists linked in the description below for red hot tracks and purples from the entire Black Sabbath catalog from 1970 to 1989 anyway. Yeah, if you're new to the band, uh, you know, just highlight one of the reds, right click, and the YouTube link should be one of the first things you see um, in, in the secondary tab. Make your own uh, playlists and then uh, uh, explore the purples when you want to get deeper into the album, and then if you really like a particular album, then just dive right into the entire album, and, and you can do that with all the, the uh, all the bands that you can think of from A to Z in the English uh, lexicon of rock music from the late 60s to the mid to late 80s. 
Like and subscribe, follow me on social media, share the video, and leave a comment if there are any observations you have about the track we just heard. The interplay, the intensity, the riffage, the pummeling nature of it all, the, the lyrics, uh, any impressions you had about certain, about where they were going or what, <laughs> yeah, um, and anyway, until next time, this is Aragon, the world's most ear-traveled tri signing off.